You may be advised by the fools around you, as we always know, and a leader is known by the people surrounding him. If you are surrounded by the four fools, you become the, the fifth fool. Welcome back to AFAX number one stop to entertainment and trending news. Mbakasi East Member of Parliament Babo Wino has spoken days after he was arrested and charged with conspiracy to commit chaos or submersive activities. Babu was arrested on July 18th evening at around 8 p.m. at JKIA. The MP has condemned the government for how he was treated throughout the days he was arrested, adding that it was inhumane. According to Babu, he was handcuffed, blindfolded, and thrown in a boot of a Subaru car. He said he was driven in the middle of nowhere. The MP also added that for three days he did not eat, drink water, take a shower, nor allow to see his family. He questioned how other Kenyans are usually treated if he as an MP was treated in such manner. He also said the only mistake he made was to fight for the rights of Kenyans. And if that is what is going to cost his life, so be it. He added that he is an elected member of parliament whose role is to fight for Kenyans. He warned the government against mishandling leaders, adding that it will make things worse. Well, let's get to listen to the message that he shared this evening. My fellow Kenyans, I'm Babu Oeno, member of parliament in Bakasi's constituency. I want to take this opportunity to thank Kenyans for the great support that you gave me during this challenging moment. I was arrested on Tuesday, the 18th day of July, 2023, at Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, around 9 p.m., handcuffed, blindfolded, and thrown in a boot of a Subaru car, driven in the middle of nowhere, put in a solitary confinement. For three days, I went without food. No, I wasn't given food, no access to my family, no access to my lawyers, to my legal representation. I did not take bath. I did not take water, and that was a very inhuman treatment accorded to me. If a member of parliament can be treated in a very harsh way, what is happening to normal Kenyans? I want to take this opportunity to condemn such acts. The only mistake I made was to fight for Kenyans. And as a leader, an elected member of parliament, I'm a voice of the voiceless. I'm a messenger. You can kill the messenger, but you will never kill the message. You can harass the messenger, but you will never uh, destroy the message that is delivered. And if fighting for Kenyans is what will cost me my life, so be it. I'm an elected member of parliament whose role is to fight for Kenyans, is to fight for the downtrodden, is to fight for the people who are languishing in abject poverty, is to ensure that I deliver the best to them. And that is what I've been doing. Since I was a student leader, I was fighting for the interest of Kenyans and I will continue fighting for the interest of Kenyans. I will never be gagged. And in fact, what you're doing to me and what you're doing to other leaders will just catalyze this reaction. We will do it even better. We will ensure that we will never be intimidated, we will never be cowed. As you can see, there are very harsh conditions in this life. Life is unbearable. The cost of living must come down. The price of fuel must come down. The price of hunger must come down. The price of other commodities must come down. A good leader is one who ensures that his people do not suffer. Subjecting people to these harsh conditions, to suffering, means that you are fighting for a personal interest. This government rode on the back of the hustlers, the same hustlers of whom they are destroying on a daily basis. They are killing them, unleashing policemen to kill them, to maim them, to, to cause injuries on them, and that is not fair at all. On a daily basis, you blame Raila to be the cause of the deaths of the people. Raila did not give instructions to the police to use brute force, to use the extrajudicial means to, uh, to gag people from fighting for their inherent and inalienable interest, not only spiritedly, but also religiously. Never blame Raila on this, because Raila is not in government. Raila did not take the price of Ung to the ceiling. Raila has not raised the cost of living. You as President Ruth, you as Rigadi Gashago, what you are doing to the people is to deny them their fundamental human rights in addition to that, you are killing them. You are destroying them. 
These hustlers, what will you tell them in 2027? How will you explain to them that you are the same person who used to fight for their interest? That you are the same person who condemned the extrajudicial killings? How will you explain to these hustlers? And I can tell you, even in the Bible itself, a story is told in the book of First Kings from chapter 12. When King Solomon had passed on, because King Solomon passed on after increasing taxes, there was heavy burden on the people. And after he passed on, his son, Rehoboam, took over. People went to Rehoboam as the new king and requested that the burden be lifted from their shoulders, that the cost of living to go down. And I invite you as Ruto to read this book because it will teach you a lot. When people talked to Rehoboam to reduce the cost of living, he told them that he would go and consult the people who had worked with his father, the elders. When he went to the elders, the elders told him to listen to the voice of the voiceless, to listen to his people and reduce the cost of living. The father went to the young men whom he grew up with, his age mates, who, who advised him that he should be harsh on the people. He went back to the people, told the people that I have a solution for the uh, heavy burdens on your shoulder. And the solution is simple. That number one, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. That is what Reboam told the people. Number two, he said, if my father used whips on you, I will unleash scorpions on you. The third thing that Reboam told the people is that if there is heavy burden on you, I will make it heavier. This made people to rebel. Because of the harsh treatment of the people, it led to the 12 tribes being divided into two kingdoms. One kingdom was the kingdom of Judah, which comprised of the two tribes, ruled by Rehoboam as the king, just as what is happening. And the other 10 tribes rebelled and they formed the kingdom of Israel that was ruled by Jeroboam. And I can assure you that if you impose heavy taxes on your people, you are meant to go down. You will go down. It doesn't matter who is the messenger. You can destroy the messengers, but the message is clear that you will go down. You may be advised by the fools around you, as we always know, and a leader is known by the people surrounding him. If you are surrounded by the four fools, you become the, the fifth fool. If you are surrounded by four wise men, you become the fifth wise man. But as things are clear, in black and white, you are surrounded by fools. I can clearly tell you that Kenya, where it is headed, just like in the Bible, will go down because of the heavy cost of living you are imposing on the people. Because of the high cost of living, because people lack a lot in life, you are rushing to build for people houses. People don't need houses. People just need food. People need school fees. And as a leader, I know what it is to lack food. That's why I will fight for them because I lacked food at some point. You tell me you lack food, I know what it is to lack food. If you tell me that you lack school fees, I know what it is to lack school fees. You are rushing to build for people houses, which is not a main challenge, but people's main challenge is the food. Just let the cost of living come down. If it doesn't come down, it must be forced to come down. Lastly, I would like to advise Rachel Ruto and Bishop Dorcas Lashagwa that you don't need to pray for Kenya. You don't need to pray for people. Pray for your husbands. The problem is in your house. The problem is not outside the door. You are living with the problem. Don't cast the demons. Look near you. You will see them. We will continue fighting and to Kenyans, we will always fight for you. Members of the press, we, will, we thank you very much for being on the side of the people. Tibim. And you've heard it from Embakasi East Member of Parliament, Babu Owino. You are up to date. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, so you'll be the first to be notified once you have any new uploads. I will catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.